Hello and welcome everyone. Today I have come up with a new topic and this is very useful for all those who are working into the US payment system, which is the Fedwire. And not only for the US payment system, you know, even if you are working for the SWIFT payments and originally messages being sent out from some other country and then finally getting settled down into the US or any of the bank from the federal system, right? Uh, is helping you to settle the payment to any other bank within the country or also the country. So it is very important. So let's get started. So let's understand the introduction part of the Fedora first. The Fedora fund service is a real-time gross settlement system. Each transaction processed individually and settled upon the receipt via a high secure electronic network. Settlement of the funds is immediate, final and irrevocable. Like in India, we have RTG system, right? And same way in other country, there will be a different different name for this real-time cross settlement. In, in, in US, we call it as Fedwire, where the payments are settled one-to-one, -one, as in when a payment is initiated from the Fedwire participant bank's customer side, then the payment will get settled if the funds is available into the settlement account or the master account. We have already gone through in the real-time cross settlement. I'm just going to explain you one more time. Before that, let's understand a few of the highlights of the Fedwire system. So Fedwire system are flexible online access alternatives, access to a broad network, real-time processing, final and irrevocable fund settlement, immediate availability of the funds, security and reliability, low transaction fees. These are the key highlights of the Fedwire system Having said that, let's take an example, or I would say this is how your Fedwire local payment gets settled in the Fedwire system, or uh, call this uh, you know, CSM system. So I have taken this example for the Fedwire payment system. So take, consider the, an example. LTD is an, a corporate customer who holds an account to the City US Bank. Now, instructed by this LTD bank, to make the payment of US to 20 million to a bank, sorry, to a customer who holds an account in Standard Chartered Bank US. Now, when the payment is initiated, right, uh, it can be a it can be from any of the banking channel. And once the payment message is received, right, oh, sorry, instruction is received, then the bank does the validation and then it sends out a direct payment message that is a proprietary format, Fedwire proprietary format, since it does not follow any global standard message that is uh, uh, either Swift empty messages or, or call it as ISO 2022. As of now, it has not migrated. So till now, it is still using uh, Fedwire proprietary message. I'll show you how it looks like. So if it was equivalent to empty one, uh, if it is if it was MT103, then we could have the you know easily identifier. But since it is a Fedwire proprietary message, uh, that is also not difficult to understand. You know, just the tag names is different. I'll show it to you how it varies. Now the, that uh, once the Fedwire payment message is sent out to the RTG system or sorry, or Fedwire system in this case, then before that, I'll just explain you that they both all those banks who are participant of the Fedwire will have a settlement account, which is also called as a master account available in the central bank side. Now, now as we know that RTGS or the Fedwire system is governed by the central bank itself, right? So um, they will have the settlement or master account available over there. If they have a sufficient fund in their master account, then what will happen is this 20 million will be debited from the city US 33 USD account, master account, and they will, they will credit to the settlement account that is the master account of the Standard Bank US 33 USD. And the proprietary Fedwire MT103 message would be released by the Fedwire system to the bank. And on receiving the message, not only this, they will also receive an acknowledgement message or advice message mentioning that the payment. Uh, misses. I mean, I mean, the payment has been settled in the master account, which is available at uh, the system, and the payment you need to make transfer would be sent via MT103 equivalent, which is the Fedwire format customer credit transfer payment. 
Now, on receiving the misses, they will then credit the payment to the PLC company who holds an account in Standard Bank US. This is a straightforward example of the scenario where I could take the local payment that happens in the Fedora system, right? So this is a local payment. How about the international payment, cross-border payment? Is it acceptable in Fedora system or not, right? How the Fedora system help then help the cross-border payment to be settled, right? So consider this example. There is a company P, right, in India, uh, who would be asking this bank, State Bank of India, to make the transfer to a good, to a, another corporate customer who holds an account at Standard Standard Bank US, right? Now, on receiving this payment request, stand, uh, State Bank of India, they would use any of the cross-border payment network systems to transfer the message. Now, in this case, State Bank of India identifies that, okay, City US is their currency correspondent relationship. They will send the MT103 message to City US Bank and City US Bank on receiving that MT103 message. Then they will identify, okay, the beneficiary customer holds an account in a bank who is in US itself. So instead of sending this message via Swift network, they would go ahead with the local clearing settlement mechanism, in this case, a Fed wire. So what it does is it will send out this proprietary Fed wire message, MT103 equivalent, right? And their tax would be looked like this for the originator, right? Which is ordering customer in MT103. It will be the 5000 or 5010. And the originator's financial institution, right, it will be 5,100 as a tag. And in MT103, you would, uh, you know, this would be nothing but your tag 52A, right, ordering institution. And this is your Fedwire center, right? And uh, from this bank's perspective, this would be your, um, this would be your message receiver, right, in your block two. And in this, and, and when MT103 is being sent out, the SBL US would be your 57A, right? All right, so on receiving this MT103, then it will then identify, okay, they have to make the payment to SBL US uh, customer, PLC, and they will use this bit for our system, they will send the equivalent of MT103 information would be converted into this Fedwire proprietary message, and then it will be sent out via the Fedwire system. And, and from the Fedwire system, you know, they will debit and credit. They will debit the uh, local settlements account that is you know, master account of City US in Central Bank, and they will credit to the SCBL US 33 settlement account and they will send the credit advice and then they will send this equivalent proprietary customer credit transfer message to the bank and then on receiving that customer credit transfer message they will then settle down the plc company that is the beneficiary that holds tag 4200 so this information this particular bank would be sending 4200 3400 federal receiver 4200 beneficiary 5000 or 5001 uh, 5010 originator 5100 is originator finance and institution all this information would be sent out in this message this is how it would look like and this is how the payment would get settled all right so this is how the, your example of fit messages look like and now important part is now no more after 225 november Fedwire is not going to use any more this Fedwire proprietary message. Why is that? Because the world is migrating into the ISO 2022. So in order to maintain that pace, that uh, world space to use a common language and to, to understand the need for the time and for the interoperability for the local and for the international payment there are a lot of features which is provided by the iso 2022 which is developed by the uh, international standard of organization they have started working on this so the deadline for this and the timeline what they have given is by 2025 november and from 2022 quarter one right they will start for the like for like including three months stability and this ISO enhancements 
new elements uh, by 2025 November. Now, how can Swift Payment Guru help you in this migration, right? So what we can pro provide as a, you know, uh, service is that we can provide you a online or a offline course for the migration for ISO 2022. Now, in this course, you get to understand the different messaging, not only different messaging, especially if you're walking into uh, Swift messages, right? Or even if you are working for the Fedwire messages and messaging, if you know the Fedwire messages, then you will be able to translate into the respective ISO 20 or 22. And in this case, uh, the Swift course will help you a lot. And for that, you know, you can enroll or you can send the information for your interest by sending Swift payment, Swift, uh, by sending an email to swiftpaymentguru at gmail.com. I'll spell it out. It's, S W I F T P A Y M E N T G U R U at gmail.com. All right. And in this skills, right, uh, both offline and unroll, uh, uh, online course, right, uh, we have a lot of things to uh, give it to you. You know, we have session videos uh, for if you are going for only ISO 20 or 22 videos then it would cost only 10,000 international rupees and you'll get all those videos of around 20 hours. That's a good number of hours videos which you'll be receiving. Along with that, MT2 MX Converter tool. This is how you would be able to see your MTs where you can populate the data in the Excel sales. And then if you just export it, you'll see in your XML based messages. And these are, okay, now this is your ISO 20 or 22 syllabus. And it has a lot of information which would help you, your bank, to migrate it to the ISO 2022. Now, again, I'm saying this is not only limited to any bank or any of the country's transformation into ISO 2022 for the high value payment system. It is not only for the Fedwire, but it, 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 it can be used for any of the high value payment system, it would be JAPS, chips or links in Canada or any high value payment system. There's a lot more information which is available. So uh, starting from the introduction, then what is the benefits? What is CBPR plus? What is high value payment system? What is the differences between the high value payment system and CBPR plus? What is the world migration plan to ISO 2022? What is the, what is the granularity of the data? What, what extra they are bringing in this ISO 2022 with comparison to your Fedwire messages or with comparison to your existing MT Swift messages. What are the different domains which covers by this ISO 2022, whether it is only limited to payments, retail payments, or it is uh, uh, having a broader business domains, right? We will understand, and you will be able to understand in this videos if you subscribe or buy this uh, uh, plan or program. You'll understand a lot more about how Swift is helping the world into migration uh, to ISO 2022. What are the different channels which, will, which is available and what are the different uh, applications in a banking site, in a bank, right? There are different payment, uh, different applications which are going to be impacted by this ISO 2022 new which data. Now, in order to understand that, you can opt for this, uh, uh, videos or you can purchase this uh, course online i mean or offline as well you know so you know and then uh, once you understand the infrastructure part then you can then we will be moving into this iso 2022 messaging where we will understand the key differences between the mt and iso 2022 we'll understand the business application header of the iso 2022 in depth then we'll understand the different uh, business domain business areas messages, which includes the payment clearing and settlement messages, which includes back 2 which is for the financial institution, the financial institution payment status report, J04, which is for payment return, J08 for customer credit transfer, and J09 for your financial institution credit transfer. Now, same way for the payment initiation message, we will understand about J01, J02, and J012. And for cash management message, we'll understand J52, which is the bank to customer account report. J53 is for bank to customer statement. 54 is for uh, bank to customer debit credit notification. 56 
is for your uh, financial institution, the financial institution payment cancellation request and CAM 057 is to notification to receive. Now, in order to do, in order to purchase this plan, all right, and or to, or, or to uh, uh, enroll for the online batches, users have to send out an email for with your interest to swiftpaymentguru at gmail.com. And if you want to uh, know anything more on this, then you just reach out to this email ID and we'll get back to you on this. So all the best. And this is all from this video. See you next time.